and we are broadcasting live. Uh, welcome to Phil's First Party Show, where we talk about all topics timely and topical in the insurance restoration industry. I'm Phil Sanoff, trial lawyer with Morgan & Morgan's Insurance Recovery Group. With Morgan & Morgan's Insurance Recovery Group, I have got 55 of the most awesome lawyer colleagues you would ever want to know. We are in 25 offices, 13 states. Any problem that you might have with an insurance claim, you need to come see us and see what we can do for you. You can reach us on any cell phone, pound LAW, or go through our website, forthepeople.com. My wife thinks I'm crazy, but I always give my cell phone, 713-825-3444. You can holler at me if I can't help you, I'll get you to someone that can with Morgan & Morgan's Insurance Recovery Group. Joining me tonight, I am so excited, my lawyer friend, colleague, Mark Bozar. Mark, hit that magic button and come see us. I am. All right, there he is. Mark, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, for those of you that don't know Mark, Mark handles types of insurance claims with life insurance, accidental death and dismemberment insurance, and long-term disability insurance. So all these times that I've been talking about, if you've got any problem with any insurance claim, I finally have gotten someone to come on the show that knows about those claims that I don't know about. I do primarily property damage insurance restoration. That's why we focus the show on that. I am so grateful to Mark for coming on to talk about other areas of insurance. Mark, thank you so much for being here. Oh, I'm happy to be on here. There's been a great series. I've been following along and, and learning a lot. So I'm happy to kind of pay it back now because you've been thank, giving a lot of knowledge. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. That's very kind. So I don't want to tell your story, Mark, because it's a great, interesting story that I want folks to know. Um, tell us how you came to be involved in working in insurance claims, the legal aspect of insurance claims, and particularly with life insurance. It's a great story. Yeah, sure. That, thanks for setting me up there. I really kind of fell into it uh, in undergrad. I was able to get a dual degree and study risk management and insurance with the same amount of minor credits. And it kind of just led me into the industry. And I got that major and really built a foundational knowledge at that time and, and then became an underwriter following graduation during the day at Philadelphia Insurance. And I was in our professional sports market. So we got to do everything from professional sports teams all the way down to youth football accounts. And while doing that, I went to law school at night, eventually transitioned to Chubb and got a little bit uh, experience in group claims and now have been on the plaintiff side fighting for individuals against these insurance companies since I graduated law school. Now, I don't want to gloss over that. You People don't toot their own horn. I get that. But I am so, I just admire people so much that work so hard. I think life is about what we do for others. And you now are doing so much for others because you've worked so hard. You worked in underwriting and worked at an insurance company, Chubb Insurance Company, during the day and then went to law school at night for a whole year. Correct. Right out of law school. My plan actually uh, following undergrad was just to go into law school, but I was an intern at Philadelphia Insurance and they kind of persuaded me to do that, uh, the day night program. So I switched last minute to stay in Philly and I uh, transitioned to Temple University out there and I did it for a year. I couldn't make it for the, the people that did it, uh, they were warriors, but for that first year, it gave me great experience in both of that. I am, I'm so grateful to know you and I'm grateful for our clients that you're able to help uh, because that certainly speaks to how hard, if you're willing to work that hard in school, goodness knows how hard you're working for these folks now. So as you may know from having seen the show a little bit, Mark, uh, you know that even though we haven't tried a case together and you haven't seen one of my presentations, you do know from watching the show that I believe in the power of three, I believe in the magic of three, I like to do things in threes. Today, focusing on life insurance claims, what are the three things that you want to make sure you talk to people about that they're aware of as part of life insurance claims? 
and that they need to come you for, come to you for help if they have challenges with this? Sure, and there's really three big things that are all connected as issues that lead to claim denials against life insurance, and that's conversion of claims following termination of employment, and then there's misrepresentation on an application, which is the second one, and the third is issues with lapse. All right, all right. So we're gonna talk about those three points throughout the show tonight. Before we get into that, let's talk about how long you've been practicing law in this area and how long you've been with Morgan & Morgan. Some of your stories about the cases that you've helped folks with, please. Sure, so I graduated in, in 2016 and I immediately started working um, representing beneficiaries. And that's what I kind of focused immediately on. Uh, both through these life and accidental death claims. Um, from there, I was able to join Morgan & Morgan six months ago, and from that opportunity have now uh, taken on some long-term disability claims as well as other first-party stuff. So it's been really the entire time I've been doing it. It's just so great, so great to have you here. So let's, although we'll have you on the show, on the show again to talk about those other aspects of insurance, Make sure that I'm telling the truth every time I say, if you have any insurance pro claim problem with any insurance, come see us. You help me make sure that we keep that going, going strong. Let's talk about the first point on life insurance claims. So we talked about that that was going to be conversion of claims through after an employment termination. When folks are either hearing this tonight or if they see this on the YouTube channel, if they're hearing it later, just audio on the podcast, what do we need to focus on and understand for the people hearing this about conversion termination and how that affects claims that they would need to come see you? Sure, and I think maybe just giving an example of what it would look like. And it would really occur to anyone out there in a job who was a loyal employee and then either due to a terminal illness or a sickness at end of life, they're required to stop working. When they stop working, all too often, their employer does not provide them with the application to continue their life insurance benefits without an application or need of evidence of insurability. They only have 31 days to do it after their last day of work. They don't get that notice, therefore never convert, unfortunately pass away a couple months later and now their beneficiaries don't have access to these death benefits they were relying on. Wow, wow. And so that those those time limits really sound, we think in the property world, I think the time limits are too short, 31 days and then you lose out. Uh, what are some of the ways that you help people when they come to you with those types of issues? Uh, the first thing we're, we're going to look for is whether or not the employer provided notice. Did they give them the application to continue these benefits? Because all they need to do at the end of the day is just themselves now pay the premium. But if they don't keep these benefits, they now are sick and can't find coverage in the open market because they won't meet an application. So they only have 31 days to just submit this one page, but they're oftentimes just never given it. Okay, Mark, so somebody is, is I'm in Texas, you are in Pennsylvania, somebody is watching or hearing this in Indiana, somebody is watching or hearing this in Illinois. What if they think, oh, dang, that's something that I need to look into, but Mark is in Pennsylvania and I'm over here quarantined in Indiana. What do I do about that? How do we talk to them about that, Mark? I would tell them to dial pound law and give us a call because the beauty of this uh, type of claim is that it's a federal law that governs it. So because of that, we have the ability to handle these on a much larger jurisdictional scale. And because of that, we can help people everywhere across the country. So wherever you are, if you have this type of claim, make sure you give us a ring. Okay, so here's pro that's problem number one, and you fixed it. Here's problem number two. I am a relative in Utah, 
of someone that worked for a corporation for 30 years. Um, he wasn't working there anymore. He didn't have his life insurance. I don't have any money to pay a lawyer in Pennsylvania to take a look at this claim. I can hit pound LAW all day long, but how am I going to be able to get you to take a look to see if you can help me if I don't have any money to pay you to look at this? And that's a very common issue for beneficiaries, right? Because they just are removed from these benefits a little bit in this contract. So they don't have really all the information a lot of the times. So luckily we work on a contingency basis because we need to get the documents before we can really figure out if we even have a claim. So you call us and we don't recover unless we win. So it's really a win-win. And if we don't have anything there, we'll explain it. But a lot of times we get the documents and can find some coverage. And you'll get the documents and you'll work through it. You'll look at it without folks having to even come out of pocket. Nothing out of pocket. Okay, Only great. Yep. Yeah. And you're able to get those documents too. You know, if they don't have all the documents from their loved one that passed away or their loved one that didn't get the notice, they don't have the documents. What do they do then? Uh, I mean, ideally we would like a beneficiary designation showing that person entitled to those benefits but if not and there's a close relationship then we can still get those benefits on behalf of that estate and at least look at the documents because the beneficiary and insured are entitled to free access of these documents under the law within 31 days of requesting it i guess that's the key i just wanted folks to make sure they understood that you can help try to navigate getting those documents for them sure yep we'll, we'll handle it all okay fantastic fantastic now, the second thing you talked about uh, in a life insurance claim for folks to be aware of to come get your help is contestability. Let's talk to the folks about that. Sure. So contestability is another unique issue to life insurance. And all that means is that for the first two years, the policy is effective. If the insured dies during that time, the insurance company can look at those answers provided on the application and if they find a misrepresentation, they can rescind the policy, just paying back all those premiums and denying the death benefit. So it's just for that first two years, but if it occurs in that two years, the way they set these questions up, it, it leads to denial more often than not. Ah, okay, and so what do you do? Again, I, I'm somebody in whatever random state, uh, the insurance company has divided denied the life insurance benefits for my loved one. I don't know when he got the policy, but it's been a long time. How do I come get you to try to help me with that? I mean, similar to the above, just call us, we'll get the documents and we'll see whether or not there was a material misrepresentation and whether or not that really affected the risk. So all you gotta do is call us and we'll do that investigation. So if I have some sort of typo, if I put my address as 411 five instead of four one one six that's something that's wrong that's not a material misrepresentation that's going to avoid that whole policy yep that likely would not be it it's more on the health-based questions and that's what really affects a risk of a life insurance policy so um, those questions are important to the application but they're often ambiguous and they are um, more broad than an insured would think Fantastic. Fantastic. Anything else on this second point? I write them down when I try to hit my three points. I'll make sure that I steer us back to it. So we've got contestability and misrepresentation. What else do folks need to know about that, if anything? I think we hit uh, both of those points, which led us to the third, right, which was lapse. Talk to me about the third, brother. Yep. And the third is it's the toughest scenario to see because oftentimes it's an elderly person and all lapse means is a missed payment. And we find that the missed payment often occurs because of end of life health reasons, whether they're confined to a hospital or now in a nursing home. And after having paid on this policy for decades, one missed payment and 31 days later and those coverage is gone. Oh my goodness. And so if I'm somebody who has been told that I don't get the benefits of my loved one that passed away because the lapse occurred. How is it that they need to think about coming to you? What can you do to help with that lapse? 
it's the same thing. We, we got to get the claim file. We got to get the documents and really see what the insurance company had. And what we're going to look for there is whether or not they sent notice that she was past due on her payment and that she needed to make this up. And you have 31 days to catch herself, but after that, they can then terminate the policy. Whew, whew, whew. Uh, well, we've covered our three points. Anything else on either of those three points to get through with you? Uh, they're, they're the three main issues of denial. So just again, if it happens to you, make sure you dial pound law and get in touch with us. All right, all right. Well, Mark, this has been such a straightforward, bang, bang, helpful, action-packed, substance-packed show. Um, I am so grateful to you for coming on. I really felt like we needed, because this has been so broad across the country that I knew nothing about, and now I understand from you how it's important it is to get all this out to folks to understand, I really wanted us just to focus on this narrow, open quote, narrow topic of life insurance during this show, but we've got a whole other show to do with you, at least on accidental death and dismemberment and the long-term disability, right? Sure do. So, okay. Yeah. I'm back here, Phil. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, before I sign us off for tonight, is there anything else you need to say for the folks that might be hearing this and how they need to get to you for these life insurance claims? Sure. I mean, I'm going to take a page out of your book and say you can either dial pound law or I'll give you my cell phone, which is 856-237-6344. And either call us directly at any one of our offices, dial pound law, or, or feel free to call me directly, whatever. Fantastic. Mark Bozar, special guest on Phil's first party show. Love it, love it, love it. Well, I'm going to sign us off now, Mark. Again, I can't tell you how grateful I am to you for coming on here. Um, I learn something every day. I learn something every show. And I probably have learned more on this show than I've learned on any other uh, because I just had no idea how interesting these first problems would be with the life insurance claims. Well, thank you, all you folks watching, all you folks hearing this anywhere. Thank you for being with us on Phil's First Party Show. We're signing off now on behalf of Morgan & Morgan Insurance Recovery Group. Come see us. Thanks, Mark. You guys.